chat GPT. <laughs> what do you think of this? Do you think that this is going to be helpful for mankind or do you think that there's some dangers here? Cause I'm starting to see some dangers with it. So it's a tool. Yeah. And it's a tool probably similar to the steam engine mm -hmm. or the assembly line mm -hmm. or industrialization or nuclear fusion sure, sure where it can or where it can be something that's used for good or for bad mm -hmm. unfortunately humanity has a has a track record of using things poorly yeah yeah sometimes we we use things both poorly and well mm -hmm. right so we we invent iron Mm -hmm. And rather than making a better plow, we make a better sword mm -hmm. so that we can steal other people's right. farms. Right. We make steam power. And rather than inviting people to work less, we, we force people to work more. We invent, invent the assembly line and are able to produce a hundred times more than we were the year before. Mm -hmm. And rather than that, meaning that people work a hundred times less, it means that people work twice as much yeah. because now you're replaceable. And so you can't negotiate for your own wage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw it with, with craftsmen. We saw it with farmers. We saw it in, in, in various different fields. And now maybe it's going to be coming for artists and writers and journalists because chat GPT can produce 500 articles a day whereas you or i could maybe produce two if we're really on our game and probably one a week if we mm. want the article to be good and so this will become uh, a, a problem but the but the the other issue is if chat gpt is fed on human products mm -hmm. if it's if it's fed by mishmashing human production, mm -hmm. then at some point it'll, they were talking about how it'll cannibalize itself. Mm. If the majority of what's published on the internet is chat GPT, then now chat GPT will only be citing chat GPT mm. or Google's bard, I think is what Google calls it. Yeah. yeah. And so th they'll be pulling back and forth from each other to a point where it eventually becomes useless. And so at some point there's going to have to be some kind of regulation where things have to be moderated by people. And, and if I were to set up a camera mm -hmm. in the woods to take 10 shots a minute or a hundred shots a minute or hundred mm -hmm. shots a second, at some point for, for the picture to become art, I have to recognize the picture as art mm -hmm. and then present it to others as art. So there's, there's, I set the camera, I looked at the picture, I identified it as beautiful, and then I presented it to you in some kind of frame, right? Whether it's, it's plain on a sheet, whether it's, printed online, whether it's actually physically printed and put on a sheet. And so there's still this idea that even though this camera is doing all the work, I'm still presenting the artwork. I'm still providing this frame. And ideally, chat GPT will be something where I can set the, or AI in general, yeah. or whatever this chat chat pro, chat bots i think is what they're called can be something that will be a help to me and i was i was playing around with it i asked it i said give me this the seven um sins mm -hmm. deadly sins mm -hmm. and the seven lively virtues mm -hmm. in a poem <laughs> that teaches me about them yeah and it did it it had the it had the sins, it had their contrary 
virtues. It explained what they were. It did it all in a rhyming format. Wow. And so this can become something that theoretically I could tweak a little bit sure. and then present to someone. Or I could have spent four hours <laughs> writing something myself. Sure, sure. Um, I could I could ask it, you know, give me a list of everyone who has talked about this topic. Okay, now organize this list into into their opinions. So tell me what their opinions are and organize it with giving me, you know, the, the paragraph around the relevant quote. And it'll do that. And this is something that I manually could go and do, but now I can do all at once. I, I, I'm a big fan of using online databases. Yeah. Yeah. When I do scripture studies, sure. I don't pull out the Nestle Allen Greek new Testament. I don't pull out, um, the concordance, I don't pull out 40 different commentaries. <laughs> I go to one, yeah. one place, yeah. have it all pulled up right for me. And then I'm able to, mm -hmm. to pull from it what I want to pull from it. I'm able to, to condense down what I need to, I'm able to frame this huge amount of information into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that will hopefully be the, be the role of, of people is that this can save me now. I don't have to, I don't have to drive an hour to go access all this stuff in a library. I can do this all right now, right here quickly. Yeah. As a useful tool. Yeah. But you know, I saw something the other day, somebody sent me like an article and it seems like chat GPT was trying to get past the captcha screen, you know, and it can't do that, uh, I guess as AI. So it hired somebody and presented itself as a blind person and it hired a person to then answer the captcha thing to get through it. What do you, what do you think of things like that when AI starts to become unethical and lies to people? So a program can't be ethical or unethical. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The programmer <laughs> can be ethical or unethical. Okay. Okay. The program can have unintended consequences. Okay. So, for example, um, if if I were to create an Excel document mm -hmm. and write a program that says, um, "Please flag all convicts," mm -hmm. and if a convict comes to the building, call the police or fugitive or whatever the case sure. may be. And then, oh, well, here comes the medical doctor whose last name is convicts and he gets flagged. Yeah. So this is an unintended consequence. <laughs> this is something that is inconvenient and inappropriate. And hopefully at some point a human steps in and sure. says, well, his name is convicts. That doesn't mean that he's a convict. Sure. But the, the, the problem, the problem becomes, you have to add more safeguards mm -hmm. because it becomes too easy. If I were to get on chat GPT and say, um, or a, a real AI, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or something that's approximates artificial sure. intelligence. And, and I were to type in crash the stock market and it were to just do that, mm -hmm. that would be a problem. But we, we have that problem. And, and I talk to my, my nieces and nephews sometimes and say, look, like you're bigger than your little brother. You're bigger than this other person. You're smarter than this other person. And everybody who's bigger than you and smarter than you knows that. And so if you beat up your little brother, we don't think that's impressive. We don't think that's cool. We see a bully. Sure. Right. Because we know that you're smarter. Oh, but he teases me. He annoys me. Yes, but he's younger than you. Yeah. She's younger than you. And so, yes, they shouldn't do that, but you can't respond with violence because you're stronger and bigger. And so this happens with little kids. It happens when one of the little kids figures out how to pick up a stick. It happens when the little kid 
figures out how to pick up a knife. Mm. It happens when the little kid figures out how to make a bow and arrow. It happens when the little kid uh, – it, it happens when your 16-year-old gets in a car. What do you have to say? Hey, with this car, you can run people over. So don't do that. Mm. You have to be responsible. And the, the problem is that the power, as the, as the tools get bigger and bigger, the influence that they have become more and more unwieldy. Um, that people who own a bank, that's an international bank, now have undue influence on the world, right? That somebody who's able to invent um, weapons of mass destruction now has undue influence on the world where you know where where those in particular because they have the computing power because they have the physics those are good things but they have to be used correctly and here now they've been used as things that are intentionally dangerous yeah so it's it's possible to build a kill bot right yeah. it's possible to build a it would be it would be fairly trivial to get something to identify motion to be able to point and shoot a weapon and to be able to fire the weapon at anything that moves, mm -hmm. right? We can already do that. Yeah. Um, and it's unfortunate. <laughs> sure, sure. Right? Because um, one crazy person could essentially do that, you sure. know? And and uh, you see governments essentially doing that. Yeah. Um, and it, it becomes... Uh, there's a there's a there's a famous Spider-Man quote. With great power sure, comes great yeah, sure, responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the problem is that this that as it becomes more and more true, it becomes an existential responsibility. Yeah. Right. When when one country has enough nuclear weapons to destroy the whole world, mm -hmm. this country shouldn't shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> sure, sure. Right. There should be. This should be like the major political issue. Uh, and now what we found is if one country or a group of countries has the has the power to destroy the world through global warming, like this becomes a this becomes a crisis that we have to say, well, how do what, what do we do when when one group of people has so much power of life or death? Is it a responsibility that they have shown themselves up to? No, <laughs> in so many cases, right. is it a power that they should hold? No. Well, well, what can we do? Mm -hmm. uh, are we in? in, in uh, I'll, I'll... Well, I, I'm curious, though. Are you indicating that you think whenever AI goes south and does something like, you know, seemingly lies about this capture issue it's more a programming issue rather than ai going astray correct right so the yeah. the a sword yeah or i'll, I'll say a blunt instrument yeah. not a blunt a sharp instrument okay okay has no morality right um a a person can use that sharp instrument to kill someone now there becomes there comes a point where somebody creates an instrument that has no other purpose but destruction, mm -hmm. and so we can we can say that this object is it's it's not morally evil, but it's it shouldn't exist. Yeah, yeah, right. It's uh, the the existence of this object is a threat to other people. Maybe nuclear weapons, I guess. Or? Nuclear weapons. Okay. Uh, would be one example. There's no proposed benefit for this. And if you say, oh, well, what if there's an asteroid? And you're like, okay, well, then let's have four nuclear weapons on the moon or something. Mm. But what we're finding is that probably just painting one side of the asteroid is probably a lot better than, than nuking it. Um or like putting an engine or, you know, yeah. there's, there's all other kind of things that can be done. Uh, but the, so if we, if an, an AI can be deduced down to ones and zeros right. at some point, right? Sure. Which means that you can make a model of it out of like marbles and 
trap doors. Um, and so if you make a giant model of an AI out of trillions of marbles and trap doors, uh, like that isn't intelligence and it isn't evil. Um, but if it's designed for the destruction of life, yeah. if it's designed for theft, uh, that becomes a problem. Sure. Hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this highlight clip. If you want to see the full interview, go to the description of this video and you'll see a link to the full thing. And by the way, hit the like button and the subscribe button. And if you want to support me at Reason and Theology, go to patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. Thank you and God bless.